Fox News Sunday. Good morning. Yeah, I flinched a little bit because that's what people are saying that I said, but I, I didn't say that. But I'm looking forward to the conversation. All right. Let's have the conversation. Yeah. Why? Here's my first question. Why did you say in that briefing that President Trump had ordered a quid pro quo, quid pro quo <laughs> that investigating the Democrats, that, that aid to Ukraine depended on investigating the Democrats? Why would you say that? Again, that's not what I said. That's what people said that I said. Here's what I said. I'll say it again. Uh, and hopefully people will listen this time. There were two reasons reasons that we held up the aid. Um, we've talked about this at some length. The first one was the uh, the rampant corruption in Ukraine. Ukraine, by the way, Chris, is so bad in Ukraine that in 2014, Congress passed a law uh, making it uh, making us uh, requiring us to make sure that corruption was moving in the right direction. So corruption is a big deal. Everybody knows it. The president was also concerned about whether or not other nations, specifically European nations, were helping with foreign aid to the Ukraine as well. We've talked about that uh, for, for, for quite a while now. I did did then mention that in the past, the president had mentioned from me to time to time about the DNC server. He'd mentioned the DNC server to other people publicly. He even mentioned it to President Zelensky in the phone call. But it wasn't connected to the aid. And that's where I think people got sidetracked this weekend at that press conference. Two reasons for holding back the aid. Uh, uh, let, me, let, let me pursue that, though. Sure. Because I believe that anyone listening to what you said in that briefing could come to only one conclusion. Let's play what you said. Sure. Did he also mention to me in the past that the, 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 the corruption related to the DNC server? Absolutely. No question about that. Um, but that's it. And that's why we held up the money. You just described is a quid pro quo. It is funding will not flow unless the investigation into the, into the Democratic server uh, happened as well. We, we, do, we do that all the time with foreign policy. You were asked specifically by Jonathan Carl was investigating Democrats, one of the conditions for holding up the aid. Was yeah. that part of the quid pro quo? And you said it happens all the time. Yeah, but go back and watch what I said before that. I don't know if you guys can cue it up or not. There was a long answer about corruption and a you, long no, answer you, you about totally said aid, that. Just like I told you then. And, and then I said the exact same thing I just said now, which is that he mentioned in passing. Yes. But the reason that we held back the aid were the two reasons I mentioned. And I can prove it to you. The aid flowed. Once we were able to satisfy ourselves that corruption was actually, they were doing better with it. Uh, we got that information from our folks, from the conversation with Mr. Zelensky. And once we were able to, to establish, we had the Office of Management Budget do research on other countries' aid to Ukraine. It turns out they don't give hardly any lethal aid, but they do give a considerable sum of money and non-lethal aid. One, the, once those two things were cleared, the money flowed. There was never any connection between the flow of money and the service. But, but, Mick, and, you know, I, I hate to go through this, but, but you said what you said. And the right. fact is, after that exchange with Jonathan Carl, you were asked another time why the aid was held up. What was the condition for the aid? And you didn't mention two conditions. You mentioned three conditions. And I want to, and let's listen to all three of them because this, you stated it very clearly. Let's listen. Three issues for that. The corruption in the country, whether or not other countries were participating in the support of the Ukraine, and whether or not they were uh, cooperating in an ongoing investigation with our Department of Justice. That's completely legitimate. Not only did you say that investigating the Democrats was one of the three conditions, not two, that you had just said that you had talked about. Investigating the Democrats was part of the quid pro quo. You also said, if I may, it right. was part of the Justice Department investigation into the origins of the Russia probe. But the fact is, not only did the press think you said it, here's what uh, a statement that was put out by a senior Justice Department official. If the White House was withholding aid in regards to the cooperation of any investigation of the Department of Justice, that is news to us. Everybody thinks that that's what you said, and you didn't. You said right there. Right. Three points, not two. Well, and a couple of different things. You, again, said just a few seconds ago that I said there was a quid pro quo. Never use that language, because there, there is not a quid pro quo. You, but you were asked I, by Jonathan Carl, is that you've and, described a quid pro quo, and you said that happens all the well, time. And, and, and reporters will use their language all the time. So my language never said quid pro quo. But let's get to the, the, the heart of the matter. Go back and look at that list of three things. What was I talking about? <laughs>
things that it was legitimate for the president to do. Number one, it is legitimate for the president to want to uh, to know what's going on with the ongoing investigation into the server. Everybody acknowledges that, at least I think most normal people do. It's completely legitimate to ask about that. Number two, it's legitimate to tie the aid to corruption. It's legitimate to tie the aid to foreign aid from other countries. That's what I was talking about with the three. Can I see how people took that the wrong way? Absolutely. But I never said there was a quid pro quo, because there isn't. Again, Chris, you, you've been in the in these in these briefings you know how back and forth it is you know how rapid fire it is look to the facts on the ground things that you can actually sort of certify and the, what what should put this issue to bed is that the money flowed without any connection whatsoever to the DNC but, but server. You, in your first answer which I gave you said that's why we held up the money first you just said here that it was for two reasons now you're acknowledging it was for three reasons if you held up the money for three reasons that was that's a quid pro quo no, not, you got to satisfy on us on those. Now, maybe the president backed off that, but that was the proposition here. No, I'm, I'm not acknowledging there's three reasons. Again, let's go back. You said three reasons. Go back to the, I, you can, I, I recognize that. Go back to what actually happened in the real world. And by the way, go to the phone call. Go to the phone call, which we've released. I hope we get a chance to talk about that before the interview I am is going over. to right now. You go to the phone call. The president never mentions the aid at all in the phone call. Doesn't say, oh, by the way, I need you to do this, 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 and this, or else uh, the money won't flow. Uh, we all know enough about this president that if he he feels very strongly about something, he's going to put that out there uh, directly, and that didn't happen. It, so I recognize that, that folks, that, that I didn't speak clearly maybe on Thursday, folks misinterpreted what I said, but the facts are absolutely clear, and they are there for everyone to see. In the briefing, you flatly denied any connection between holding up the aid and investigating Joe Biden and his son, right? Correct. Okay. In his phone call with President Zelensky, however, President Trump specifically mentions the Bidens. Do me a favor. Trump lawyer Rudy Giuliani pushed all summer for Ukraine to announce it was investigating Burisma, the company that paid Hunter Biden. And a former NSC official testified this week before Congress. John Bolton was so disturbed by the way you were directing people to work with Rudy Giuliani. He said, quote, I am not part of whatever drug deal, he was speaking metaphorically, right. of whatever drug deal Sondland, a U.S. diplomat, and Mulvaney are cooking up. No question, you were following the president's orders, but your fingerprints are all over linking aid to Ukraine with investigating the Bidens. Okay, no, that's not true. Let's go, I'll take one of those at a time, which is the Bolton thing. Because I read that and I was surprised because John Bolton never complained to me about it. No one at NSC ever complained to me about anything that was going on. I, I didn't see Sondland's testimony this week because none of us have seen Sondland's testimony, uh, which is another story entirely. I did get a chance to read his opening statement when he said that Bolton never complained to him. Fiona Hill uh, never got a chance to complain to him. I think you need to put sort of a... If you, wait a minute. Fiona Hill is no, the one who testified. That's the quote she, came from her. never complained to Sondland about what was happening when it was happening. No, she so. complained to her boss, John Bolton. Uh, who did what? Who said, who told her to go immediately to a lawyer right. at the NSC and to complain about it. works for John Bolton. Yet John Bolton didn't go say anything to anybody. Doesn't that raise a red flag with it? But let's go back to the first one you talked about, which is the president's phone call. Because at the end of the day, that's what this is really about, right? That's why we are here, was the president's phone call with Ukraine. And you've done the same thing, and I don't blame you personally. You've done the same thing that many news outlets have done. You've said, um, do me a favor, and then immediately to the Bidens. Go look at the transcript of I, the phone conversation. It's, do me a favor, take a look at the DNC server. Then he talks about corruption in Ukraine. He talks about Rudy Giuliani. The president of Ukraine gets on, and he talks about a close cooperation between the, between the countries. He talks about uh, uh, corruption. He talks about getting a new ambassador to the U.S. And the president gets on and talks about Bill Barr. Gets, the president talks about a new ambassador between our countries. And then at the very end of that passage mentions the Bidens. Everybody else puts it on TV and says, do me a favor, look at the Bidens. And that's simply not factually accurate. Go look at the transcript yourself. Let's turn to Syria. It, Defense Secretary Esper overnight has said that those thousand troops who 